If you're looking for a new recovery resource and a community of peers with lived experience, you have to check out my friends, Dave and Susan Kenny at Emergo Academy. Dave and Susan bring over 15 years of experience in residential treatment, recovery coaching, speaking and mentorship, and now as best-selling authors and hosts of Emergo TV. Emergo TV is a live call-in style show where they answer all of your questions about sobriety, mental health, family and life challenges, and anything else you may need guidance on. Let's face it, life can be hard and we shouldn't do it alone. Head over to emergoacademy.com for more information on their brain-first approach to recovery, their best-selling book, Actualized Recovery, and where to find Emergo TV live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern. That's Emergo Academy, E-M-E-R-G-O, academy.com. And we'll see you this Thursday. The world and the universe and all the people are, are, you know, we're here to help each other and teach each other to the extent that, you know, any of us are open to learning at any given time. So it does, you know, having these conversations, Nate, and and having this conversation with you does does great things for me. And, you know, the the time and sobriety is is, you know, it just is what it is. It's if I were to spend another thousand years on this planet, I'd still be learning every day. And, and, you know, people would be teaching me things every day. And, and so if I go into my life with that sort of, you know, uh, thought process on a daily basis, and, and I know that, you know, one of the, one of the ways to define humility is being teachable. Welcome back to the Sobriety Diaries, friends. I'm your host, Nate Kelly, best-selling author and podcast producer, but most importantly, a recovering alcoholic eight years from my last drink. I am so grateful to be bringing you these powerful stories of recovery told by you, those who live them. If you're joining us for the first time, check out more information at thesobrietydiaries.com and make sure to share the podcast with one person in your life who may need it today. You never know what they may need to hear. And with that, let's open the diary on episode 110. Welcome back to the Sobriety Diaries, friends. Exciting conversation today. Fellow author, entrepreneur, Daryl Dittmer is joining me. Daryl, good morning. How are you today, my friend? Good morning, Nate. I am doing very well, thank you. How are you? I'm well. We were uh, just kind of uh, commiserating together on our uh, Midwest background and and the weather kind of um, at least affecting me a bit. I'm excited for spring and for kind of that rebirth and that uh, time of the year when uh, I kind of get the motivation from from my surroundings. Uh, I know you're a little more south now. Do you find that the weather does impact your motivation or um, kind of your your personality a bit throughout the year? I I do. I think it. Um... You know, being in, in a in a very different place from where I'd ever been, uh, from the perspective of heat and from the perspective of yeah, shorter winters, uh, is a wonderful thing. So, so and coming from you know Michigan originally, it was cloudy. I don't I don't think the sun shone too much between uh, October and April. So yeah, so there was a bit of something there with you know, just in terms of how it affected uh, me and, and I think affects a lot of people. So, so yeah, I'd say it's, it's a little more bright and cheery uh, down here yeah. because the sun shines and, you know, we certainly, we, we get cold because we're in the mountains, but not too, too cold and not for too, too long. Good. Well, if you are uh, like Daryl and myself, welcome to spring, my friends. Uh, if you're watching us on YouTube, I do have Daryl's book, uh, behind me here, when I stop fighting the unexpected joy of getting my head out of my ass, I think you know we can find ourselves in these ruts or these phases of life where you know we can look back and and say, man, I was I was stuck there, or something to kind of propel 
you know, or, or that swift kick in the ass that we need sometimes. So love the title of the book. Very excited to dive into that. But I do like Thank to you. start uh, a bit with, you know, the, the personal journey that you endured um, to get to where we are today. So if you would share with us a bit about your own addiction and, and sort of journey to recovery and, uh, you know, how we kind of kickstarted where we are, are today with, uh, you know, a, a bit of time under your belt. Sure. Uh, absolutely. And, and I haven't said it yet, but thanks so much for having me on, Nate. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Um, you know, I, I grew up in the Midwest as, as we talked a little bit about and, and, you know, where I grew up was, was, uh, it was kind of a Protestant work ethic, you know, party Midwesterners kind of thing. And, and, you know, you weren't supposed to, uh, experience pain or difficulty or, you know, any of those things that, that we experience, but, you know, they were sort of shunned. And I think that might be a family thing. It also might be, a um, you know, a, a Midwestern ethic sort of thing. Particularly um, as least. a man, right? Or, or a young man growing up in the Midwest. For sure. A hundred percent. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Um, so my dad was a mechanic. Uh, my mom uh, took care of our household and the kids. And I have an older brother and a younger sister and the middle child, whatever that means. Uh, it had Jeez, to mean we're something. striking out here so far. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. <laughs> So I, I was, uh, my dad was also a, a military veteran, um, in the Navy and, and not as a, you know, not as, uh, his life or anything. He did four years during the Korean war, but I think, you know, that discipline and that sort of, uh, that ethic that comes along with that, um, strictness, which my mom and dad were both pretty strict and they wanted us to, you know, to perform and do life in a way that that uh, they thought would make sense for us. So in addition to that, I was handed, you know, how we're all handed our belief system, right? In terms of being young, or I shouldn't say all, but but for the most part, um, I was handed my belief system. Here's your, you know, you need to be a Lutheran and you need to believe this and you need to believe that. And, and this is how life goes. And so I carried those things with me, not questioning a bit of it, because that's what I was told. And that's what I was, you know, expected to believe. And so I'm not sure that I did, but I, I did as to the extent that I was supposed to, I suppose, at that time. So my, you know, my first drink, probably like a lot of folks, early teens, I think I was 13 the first time I had drank and, and it was, it was the best thing that ever happened to me at that, at that point. Um, and it, it made me want more and I wanted to feel the way that I felt when I had that first drink, uh, you know, carefree and nothing to think about, but that, and just, you know, whatever that brought along with it. So, you know, I'm not a huge war story person, you know, there's certainly stories in my book, but, but, Suffice it to say that, you know, starting with that drink and going into and through my teens and, and getting involved in a lot of other drugs and, um, you know, and just and a lot of alcohol to the point where it was it was all I wanted to do. My life was centered around how am I going to hang out with the people that that will, you know, either provide this stuff or do it with me and and how do I acquire more? And how do I keep that going? Yes. Um, that was right. I mean, that's, that's just how it goes. And, and, and there's such a, uh, a trapped sort of feeling and, and life that comes along with that. Um, and I was, you know, I was, I was miserable I, and I wasn't, I didn't exactly know why I was miserable, but I was, I was miserable and I had this huge hole right in the middle of me. Um, and it just did not, life sucked, uh, to be quite honest. That was, that was, I guess that's the easiest way to say it. <laughs> so, um, you know, I was confronted many times and, and there was a time when, um, you know, and got in trouble and all that sort of thing. And, and just, you know, yeah, just, I was going to ask if there were consequences that started happening or, 
you know, any sort of negativity that was attached to it, you know, in the early days? Without a doubt. Um, you know, I was always, and, and the interesting thing is, I don't know how many times I was told that I was going to be arrested, but I never was, um, which was crazy, but I think it's cause we were from a small town yeah. and everybody kind of knew everybody. And, uh, you know, I, we knew some of the police by name and they knew us and, and some of us were athletes and, and, you know, I was, I was part of that sort of running the, the, yeah. uh, the line between being athletic and being, uh, what we used to call back then, a a stoner. Yeah. Very similar background, used. small town. It was kind of like the cops would come and just be like, get out of here, you know, scatter go home or what, what not. Um, yeah, very, I'm, I'm right there with you on that small town Midwest kind of vibe. It, it, it almost was like something that was expected, um, to, you know, junior, senior year to look forward to and to, to, ex to expect this group of kids to do is, um, and, and we really didn't have much else to do other than get a case of beer and go find a field and build a fire and, and drink and smoke on the weekends. Right. Yeah. And, and, you know, at a point it started to become some of those friends dropped off and some of those, you know, the more hardcore ones um, stayed in and those became the people that I was, you know, would spend that time with and, and the people who didn't have an issue with it, but just did it, as part of high school, you know, they started to to drop off and they started, you know, to get concerned about me and a couple of other friends that I had hung out with. And um, and it basically culminated in I was 18 years old and and uh, my mom said to me one day, she's like, I, you know, and that we had a talk. Right. The uh, so talks were something I always tried to avoid, but I was, I, the, 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 the deterioration in the relationship with my parents was, was huge. It was just basically gone. I remember my mom saying to me one day, and I, I don't know if I've ever said this in a podcast before, but she said, you know, I looked in your eyes and I saw evil. Hey there, future podcaster. I'm Nate Kelly, and today I'm thrilled to introduce you to something that is going to transform your podcasting journey. Are you ready to turn your passion for podcasting into a thriving reality? Let me introduce you to the Podcast Launch Accelerator. Imagine a six-month mentorship program where you get personalized one-on-one -on -one coaching, an action plan tailored to your goals, and a comprehensive podcast growth blueprint. But wait, there's more. We're throwing in exclusive interviews with industry experts, a professional podcast success toolkit, and access to our monetization masterclass. At the end of six months, we guarantee you a spot in the top 10%, appearance on top iTunes or Spotify charts, and a monetized podcast with host Red Ads. Ready to launch your podcast? Click the link in today's show notes to secure your spot in the podcast launch accelerator. Basically, I was left with, you know, either go talk to this drug counselor or just leave our lives, um, you know, at that period of time. So um, that was that was kind of what it what happened. And I and there was a period of time, I'd say probably a week, I'm not sure, but where I needed to decide whether I was going to go talk to this drug counselor or not. And, and so I ended up, uh, making the decision to do that. And it happened, you know, I was, I was not sure I wanted to keep going with my life, uh, as a whole. I just didn't know if I wanted to, to be around anymore, uh, between that discussion and, uh, deciding to go talk to this counselor. So it was, I decided to go. And when I walked into the counselor's office, he said, you can't lie to me. Don't BS me. You know, I'm not going to have it. I'll just kick you out. And, and cause my plan was just lie, right? Yeah. Lie and get through that it. Was, that was, that was, that was my mode, you know, lie, cheat, steal, whatever I can do to, to get what I want without having, you know, with having as little consequence as possible. So he told me that I was intimidated and, and 
you know, I was 18 years old. I was a kid. I didn't know what was going on. And uh, so I told him the truth to the best of my ability and ended up in treatment. Inpatient treatment? Yes, 30 days inpatient. Did you go so in that was, sober or were you intoxicated? Because I, I was, I, I think I was like four or five times the legal limit. So I had a pretty intense detox as well. But were you, did you have a detox period? It was three days. And uh, there's a, a story in my book. And I don't remember that much of it, honestly. By the time I, I don't remember that much about treatment. Um, there were so few things that I, recalled and as i was writing my book i was i was recalling as much as i could but i remember being on my bed face down and i was literally and figuratively pe being pulled downward it was it was such an intense uh thing and, and I, I attribute it to detox but i also attribute it to the battle for my soul sort of yeah. Um, and, and I was literally being pulled down to the floor and I couldn't move. There was nothing I could do. Um, and it felt like an evil was trying to take me and, and however I snapped out of it, I don't know how long it was. I have no idea, you know, how that transpired. Um, but as as far as I remember, I I was I somehow snapped out of it after a period of time, and then I I rolled over on the bed and fell asleep, and that's all I remember about the detox thing. So, so did I go in? I, I'm assuming I went in high, um, but I I couldn't tell you. I don't remember a wow. lot about that period, quite honestly. It's so interesting, and I, I I hear this come up time and time again with with you know, hundreds of, of these conversations that I have and these intense spiritual sort of experiences that we have that's, you know, some are almost unexplained and some are so intimate and tied to, you know, whether it's a higher power or the universe or, you know, whatever, you do or you believe in uh it's so interesting that there always seems to be like a an awakening or a spiritual experience battle right it's yeah. it is and i think it is a battle for you know what's next and for our souls or however anybody wants to term that or think about that and and you know i don't my definition of those things changes over time and has changed immensely over time. But I, I do, I think you're right. I think that battle is being waged. Yes. Uh, I wanted to kind of just interject before we move on, because I think it, it kind of fits well uh, now in the story, but there's this concept in your book or kind of like an overall concept of, you know, like no matter the cards were dealt or no matter, uh, in, in this case, the belief system that is kind of imparted upon us or no matter where we're born or what we have, uh, our responsibility to kind of understand and learn more and dig in and uh, kind of do better almost. When did this kind of idea or, or concept start to develop within you? I would say that it developed over uh, a period of time. Um, I, I was not familiar with anything having to do with having my life together or my stuff together or <laughs> any of that. Yeah. And, and I was 18, you know, and I went into treatment. I, I was 19 at that time. So, so it was over a period of time. And, and as I, you know, as I learned more and, and my sponsor, I got involved in the 12 steps right away and, and in, in, and through treatment, which was, and I'm so happy that I did, um, that it, it gave me a framework. So it gave me something to at least refer to and say, okay, uh, you know, I, I can, I can do some of this stuff. I just need to follow some directions. Um, you know, which is really about as simple as it as yeah. it gets um which is cool 
because that's that's what I needed at that time. And and I got a sponsor. And so to answer the question, uh, Nate, I would say, you know, it really took time uh, to develop that mindset. And it took time to in watching myself and experiencing my own sobriety in my own life, but also, you know, I did what they said as far as going to as many meetings as I possibly could. Um, I, I did that because I needed to. I needed to uh, change how I was doing my life, and and that was that was a big part of it. All those things were a big part of it. So, uh, I, and I think I've gotten a little you know, the, the, the road narrows, right. And, and in terms of what we can sort of get away with <laughs> as we continue to be sober True. and, and as we continue to move forward. So, and that happened for me. And, and so I'm, I'm less, uh, and I wouldn't say I'm more strict with myself. I just know what ruminates for me and what doesn't. And, and quite honestly, what ruminates is, doing all the things that I know that I need to do and not ignoring what I know I need to do. So true. Yeah. I think there can be this sort of, uh, rebellious approach. Um, you know, when people are, um, not forced, but you know, if, if there's an intervention involved or if there's family involved that are suggesting some sort of treatment, um, you know, when someone's not ready, there can be a rebellious approach to it. So when I look at the title of your book, you know, it means it can mean so many different things. But, you know, for me, when I stop fighting, you know, I can be my own worst enemy sometimes. So when I look at it, and I think I'm fighting against myself, if I would just, you know, put the guard down and accept help or accept you know, this framework that you mentioned or these simple steps or this simple program, obviously my own decision-making was broken <laughs> at the time. So, you know, I love how the title can sort of mean different things to different people. Do you fight against yourself? Did you fight against yourself? Oh yeah. Yeah. That was, that was, uh, that was the battle, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's the big one. And, and because all, even fighting other people, fighting life, fighting all the things that we're capable of fighting. And I know I was capable of fighting started from fighting myself and it all starts right with, with start with fighting ourselves. And that's, that's very insightful, Nate, you know, to just to, to latch onto that because that's, that's just so true. And so how it how it happened in terms of of and i'll i'll just share how that title happened yeah. as far as the book goes um so i was about eight months sober and and i i didn't come from a, a college educated family nothing like that and and you know it's very blue collar upbringing and and which was cool and it was great and i i but i decided to go to college after i got sober and and one of the reasons I decided to go to college because I wanted to play basketball. And so I, I ended up going to a small school in Michigan and, uh, and it was, it was great. But, but the reason I impart that is because I met my sponsor at a meeting uh, around that school and he became the most impactful person in my entire life. And his name was Bud. And uh, he was an artist, a sculptor and a painter and, and just an incredible guy. And, uh, he was about 15 years sober at the time, and and my entire life was about fighting. It was about, and I don't mean you know fighting other people necessarily, although that was part of it, but it was mostly just fighting myself. And yeah. but I didn't know that, and so I was wrestling with some problem or some issue, and and you know just just doing the the typical fight. And Bud said to me. He said, Daryl, when you stop fighting, the fighting stops. And that's the reason that I titled the book that way. But it's also that what he said to me has guided my life from that point on. And, and 
the understanding of what that means has morphed a lot over time. But, um, but the the truth holds that the fight is me fighting me. Absolutely. Well, here's to Bud. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful human. Drink aside, but when we start doing the other work that's involved, when did you sort of have a spark to, you know, think that, man, maybe I could help someone else? Or, um, you know, I know the first line in the book, or it might be the introduction is saying to your wife, remind me to write a book one day. How far along did this sort of spark to share with others or, you know, potentially help others uh, ignite? I would say it, it took a while um, because, because, and I, I have sponsored people and all that sort of thing. And, and, but it took a while because I, I guess I didn't feel like, I was able to give uh, for quite some time. I, I felt like I was more, um, not necessarily just in need of help, but not necessarily feeling like I could really, you know, hey, let's go out and, and you know, spark up a bunch of other people. Now, that's not to say that, because I've been helped by every person on the planet if I'm paying attention, um, you know, whether they're at meetings, not at meetings in the grocery store, you know, you watch people and, and you see what to do and what not to do. So, so, uh, you know, I'm hoping that I helped people along the way with the things I said and, and, but in terms of that spark, uh, the reason I said to my wife, you know, remind me to write a book someday was because it wasn't necessarily to help as much as it was to impart some of the stories that that were you know just stories uh you know from my life but but my son and my wife one of my sons uh you know it's said as we talk we talk about things and and uh you know it's very cool because you know everybody's learned to be very open and you know hey here's what it is it's on the table you know, let's talk about it. And I come in from left field with these crazy <laughs> ways of looking at the world and looking at things that a lot of people don't necessarily look at life that way. And it's, it's what I was taught. So, so that, that started going into uh, the book and started going into my thought processes. And, and they would say, you need to write a book because we think it could help some people. And, and that's, that was something that I thought was pretty cool because I didn't necessarily look at it that way, but, but now it's what drives me. Now it's what, you know, what I want to do. I just, I, I want to share my experiences in the hopes that, that it can help someone else and it can ignite something. And, um, like things were ignited for me by people who were happy to, uh, you know, share their stories with me, you know, that was, that was, and so there's such a selfless giving that was given to me. And I, I, I needed to, I needed to do that. Now I, now I look at it as it's my duty to do that. Daryl, are there any uh, specific recovery resources that you'd like to share? Any books that come to mind? Any, um, speakers or podcasts shows anything you'd like to share with the audience you know i started my journey uh and 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 bud gave me a book and it was the first book that he gave me and it was called it was called the 10 commandments by emmett fox and and emmett fox books were given actually sermon on the mount was one that was given to early aa um before they had a big book. So Emmett Fox was, you know, some of his teachings were, were very important early on. And, and I will say, don't let the title scare you quite <laughs> honestly. Um, yeah. Because it's, for me, it had nothing to do with religion and it had nothing to do with, you know, anything like that. It had to do with expanding my 
thoughts and my ability to look at the world in an expanded way and, and in a way that was different from the sort of encapsulated, um, you know, life that I'd been living. So, so between the 10 commandments and, and quite honestly, the big book and the 12 and 12 and, and those books, those are what really got me started. And, and I've read a bunch of, uh, philosophies, um, you know, in terms of Buddhism and Taoism and, and Hinduism and all sorts of things. And, and the only reason I read those is not because I necessarily need to subscribe to them. It's because there's probably something in there that I can learn from a principal perspective that can allow me to be better in this world. Um, and, and that's why I, so I guess to answer, you know, in terms of anything specific, I've read, you know, a ton of Deepak Chopra. I've read most of Emmett Fox's books. Um, and I've read a whole smattering of, of, you know, books, but I would say, I'll say, go where the spirit leads you go, what, go with what resonates. If you're walking through Barnes and Noble or you're online and you see a book and you're like, you know, that looks like it might be pretty cool. Grab it and, it and, and explore. And explore, you know, I, I think that's one of the biggest things that's been most important to me is, is I needed to explore and, and I can't tell anybody else how to explore. Um, but exploration of our internals is one of the most important things that, that we can do in my opinion in recovery. That's great. It's kind of full circle to that concept that we talked about of, you know, our duty to explore this, this universe that we're in, particularly how we contribute to it or how we show up in it and potentially affecting other people who then go out and affect others and so on. You know, I love discussing the philosophy behind perhaps, you know, how we've ended up where we are and, um, you know, again, bringing it back to the cards we dealt, you know, it's not always just, well, you know, put my hands up and, and surrender. It's how can we take those and evolve? So thank you for sharing that today. Mm. Daryl Dittmer, when I stop fighting the unexpected joy of getting my head out of my ass, we'll link the book in today's show notes. Daryl, thank you so much for your time. What a great conversation. So, so glad we crossed paths. Thank you, Nate. As am I. Wonderful. And, and I appreciate the, the questions and, and, uh, and thank you so much for having me. I'm, I'm very glad we crossed paths as well. And let's stay in touch. Thanks so much for listening today, friends, and downloading our episodes. Hopefully you heard something inspiring today and that resonates with you. For more information and to apply to be a guest on the show, head over to thesobrietydiaries.com or follow us on Instagram at Podcast Revolution Studios. I love chatting with you guys. Check out all of our video episodes at youtube.com slash Nate Kelly. Make sure to subscribe to the show now so you never miss an upload. We're back with new episodes every Wednesday. Goodbye, everyone.